Um, all right, everyone, as I shared, I am Karen Strawn, the Youth Program Coordinator at the Dixon Gallery and Gardens, and I am just over the moon tickled to get to um, introduce our special Munch and Learn speaker today, um, Charmiel Alexander. Um, Charmiel Neely Alexander is a Memphis native who has lived in Atlanta, Georgia, and also Las Vegas. Nevada and has come to us to live in Memphis with her seven-year-old daughter um, and to work at the Dixon Gallery and Gardens. And she is also the executive assistant for our director, Kevin Sharp. Um, since 1998, she has been sharing her journey about our Memphis hero, Tom Lee. She is Tom Lee's great, great niece. Did I get that right, Charmiel? I believe. Um, and she encourages everyone to um, question and look into your family lineage because um, you never know what you may discover. And we were really um, kind of especially tickled um, to have Charmiel not only um, as a relative of Tom Lee's to give this talk, but our connection was our Meet the Dixons exhibition that we just opened in the interactive gallery, which gives you a closer look at the lives of Hugo and Margaret Dixon. And Margaret Dixon was actually on the M.E. Norman that um, was going down in the, in the Mississippi and was saved by Tom Lee. So we were having these conversations and then lo and behold, right here in our very own Dixon family <laughs> um, is um, Tom Lee's great, great, great niece. Um, thank you so much, Charmiel. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Great, wonderful, okay. And I'll share my screen. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Karen, so much. Also, thank you to the Dixon Gallery and Gardens. And the title of my <clears throat> presentation is What's in a Name? Everything If It's Yours. And as she mentioned, I am the great, great niece of Tom Lee, a Memphis hero. And also wanted to I did thank the gallery, uh, Dixon Gallery and Gardens, and also the education department because uh, Margarita Sandino and Karen Strand, they offered, um, well, they, they presented the Meet the Dixons and it is currently on display in the education building. And I'm gonna move that out of the way. And um, <clears throat> it's basically uh, what Karen mentioned and I won't repeat that. But also, um, I have to mention Bill Drees of the Daily Memphian. Um, I just wanna mention him first because he had a whole lot to do with how I was able to share my story of my lineage with local Memphians and folks worldwide. So this was the first article that um, Bill Drees did. And um, that's what the title was. And I've stuck with that for many, many years. Um, this is my aunt Evelyn Watts. My dad um, and Evelyn um, were sisters and brothers. And Evelyn, she was able to share her story about Tom Lee with us before she passed away. And over here to the right at the bottom, um, they did a, right, real, a really nice story about her um, as an obituary type of news article. And she shared stories that she was, she spent summers at the new home uh, that Tom Lee was given back in 1925, 27 per se, and how they planted flowers in the yard and in their garden. And before she passed, she also did a video, I'm sorry, an interview with WDIA radio station, which was in 1998. And I actually have it on the cassette tape today. And when I hear it, I just, oh, I just tear up. It's, I just love hearing her voice. It was just something about it. But just wanted to share that information about her and that she continued to rest in peace. Also here um, is my father and my grandmother. 
So my grandmother is Miss Luella Neely, who um, introduced my father, Mr. James Herbert Neely, to our lineage. And the information is kind of covering up. But um, my dad was an advocate of Tom Lee once we learned about him and I learned about Tom Lee. And he did a whole lot back in the 80s. As you can see, he, um, he first had his own business, which was a Bill Street Arts Guild. He was a teacher, a community activist. He did a lot for um, the community as far as music and uh, uh, stage plays when it was Shelby State Community College. And he also, um, he rallied for Tom Lee Day back in 1983, and which we'll see the first flyer over here to the left. And back then it was Mayor Richard Hackett. Uh, you have the resolution by city council, James Ford, and the endorsement and then music. And then local artists and different people were invited that day. I remember that day. I remember that day vividly. We were out on the park in, in Tom Lee Park. We were sitting on the grass and um, on the blanket and the grass and whatnot. But um, over to the right, you have the article that was in the newspaper. My grandmother, may she rest in peace. Well, that's a little information before I change slides. And before I get, before I move on. I um, want to also mention my cousin, Denise Neely. She is the family historian and has done an enormous amount of work in keeping us abreast of our uh, ancestry, um, other family members of Lee. She has done a tremendous amount of work. And I do want to, you know, give her a special shout out and say thank you. And hopefully she's on the uh, it's Tom Lee Park, the information on Tom Lee Park. I just caught it. Is that a question for me? Karen? Okay. If everyone, if you do have a question, if you'll just drop that in the chat, we will have um, Q&A at the end. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. And I hope hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Okay, all right, I'll go to the next slide. Um, meet the man, uh, Tom Lee. This, um, these are pictures taken by the Commercial Appeal. And I always like to mention um, the Commercial Appeal because if it wasn't for them, I don't know if we'll even have any pictures of Tom Lee. We don't um, per se have many at home in the family home, but um, these were some really nice ones that uh, the commercial appeal have on in, in their files. So, um, okay. And here I'll just kind of go over the story of um, May 8th, 1925. So late during the afternoon of May 8th, Lee steered his 28 skip the Zev upriver after delivering an official to Helena, Arkansas. And of course, all of this information is uh, part of our history. So this is where I got it from. And most of us can uh, or already know it, but I'll just go through it a little bit. Also on the river was the team both the MPD carrying members of the Engineers Club of Memphis, the American Society of Civil Engineers and their families. Ultimately, Lee rescued 32 of the 72 people on board. Only a dozen passengers were, only a dozen passengers made it to shore without Lee's help. When news of the tragedy reached Memphis, reporters were eager to find the everyday hero who had rescued so many. But Lee was nowhere to be found. He was still on the river searching for survivors. Lee immediately became a Memphis hero, even as the quiet naked man modestly claimed. In his words, quote unquote, I guess I didn't do any more than anyone else would have done in my place. 
The last passenger Lee pulled from the river was a prominent Memphis Society girl named Margaret Oates, who managed to stay afloat by popping open her parasol and trapping air beneath it. This clever lady later married Cotton Merchant, Hugo Dixon, and the arts patron would later open their home, Korean Garden. And here is just a little bit more information I like to share with folks about um, facts and did you know. So the first part, um, we mentioned that already. And to also know that um, Tom Lee was 39 years old when this happened. And also um, during that time, the city of Memphis provided Tom Lee with a job as a sanitation worker and he retired from it. And also to honor the hero, the Memphis Engineers Club raised enough money to purchase a home for Lee and his wife, Margaret, who she later re relocated to Los Angeles. And this was the home that my Aunt Evelyn spent her summers in. And Tom Lee was diagnosed with cancer in 1950 and later passed away in 1952 at 66 years old. And he's laid to rest in Mount Carmel Cemetery um, at Everest Presley and Elliston. I also like to, you know, hear the fact that he lived 27 years after the sinking of the Norman and was well taken care of by the Engineers Club and the citizens of Memphis. And he went on to live a quiet and unassuming life. Also, I learned later on that the Zelf, which was the name of the boat, um, Probably the name came from an American thoroughbred horse racing champion uh, from the National Museum of Racing. But I kind of wanted to mention that because it's also mentioned in Jimmy Ogle's, uh, one of his presentations that he did, which we'll get down to that. So two years after his death in 1952, a 30 acre park along the Memphis Riverfront was named in his honor and a granite obelisk was erected. And E.H. Crump was the mayor then. He spearheaded the campaign to raise the monument in his honor. And also later you'll see pictures of Margaret, his wife. She returned to Memphis to plant a tree in Tommy Park. Also, there is a, a community pool that's currently being used today. The Tom Lee Outdoor Pool, it's, um, it's on popular near Carnes, um, and of course off of Peach uh, Road Avenue. Um, and also that proclamation for the Tom Lee Day was signed in 1983. Also, uh, October 2006, a new memorial was unveiled in special dedication ceremony by David Allen Clark. Uh, June of 2008, the Coast Guard honored Tom Lee with a certificate of valor. Really nice, big, huge type of valor, and I still have it at home. Also, the Engineers Club. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so we have the Engineers Club of Memphis. They have a commemorative proclamation recognizing the valor. I received a probably, uh, I received maybe two or three uh, from the Engineers Club. And each year they're always doing something on the anniversary of Tom Lee or, or the Emmy Norman. And he is, uh, and they are always contacting me to keep me abreast of what's going on with that. And I'm gonna move that. Um, the Memphis River Parks Partnership, um, they did a ceremony for the 94th anniversary in honor of Tom Lee and the Emmy Norman, which there will be more information on that. Uh, 2018, um, Tom Lee was recognized by Representative Barbara Cooper and the Living Legends team in honor of the Harriet Tubman Legend Award. And also, Tom Lee is mentioned in two hardback books. One is the Tennessee series, volume one, and then um, Memphis Sketches, I copy. Okay. So here's a picture of Margaret Lee, uh, courtesy of the Commercial Appeal once again. Uh, she came back uh, from California to plant the tree. And a lot of people ask, is the tree still there? And there's really no way of knowing. 
but she she stood by Tom Lee even in his uh, demise, and she uh, supported Memphis whenever they asked her to. So, um, would like to know where she is and where her family is. But that's her part of the story. And this was in 1967, too. And I like this this picture here from the. Uh, commercial appeal. It is a Memories of a Lifetime article that they used to do. And this is not in 2013, but it was published in 2013. And you can see how close the cars were back then to the actual statue. But now it's not that way. And the most, oh wow, the Engineers Club of Memphis. Um, as you see on the bottom of my slides, I have links, but it's not for you to try to write down or anything, but just to know that you can go to these websites and get more information. But the Engineers Club of Memphis, um, I'm still in contact with them. Just went to a Christmas party last year for, uh, with them. And um, they, they are just, they're just a great group of people. And I, I just thank them for always, um, keeping Tom Lee on the forefront, but they honor their, they honor their hero. He's all our hero at the end of the day. He's a Memphis hero. And Memphis, uh, when he saved those 32 people, those lives brought about thousands of other lives. So those people around in Memphis right now, and, and from time to time we have gatherings uh, with them and you know, they have stories to tell that we don't know because their grandfathers told the story to them. So um, Ed Eckstein was the vice president in 1998. And he was the one that I was pretty much in contact with, with my great aunt, with my aunt Evelyn. And uh, today um, I speak with Pam Thayer. She's the office secretary and she gives me a call every now and then. And mostly ever since 1998, um, I would receive some type of communication about how they're uh, celebrating the anniversary. One time we actually went on a boat ride. And I was like, wow, you know, it was just amazing. I had never been on the, one of the Memphis Queens before, but uh, that time, well, that was a great, okay? And we want to take a moment and remember the Norman. Um, the pictures here are from a 1998 exhibit. And the exhibit was held at the Memphis Clifford Davis Federal Building. Now, this was in 1998, and the sole survivor of the Emmy e. Norman in 1945 was Leroy Henninger Jr., which he's pictured here on the left. Leroy um, was great. I mean, he's, he was a great man. He did a whole lot in his time after surviving. And he had stories that I just love to hear. And I actually met him um, for the first time here at the Clifford Building in 1998. So you'll see that he was the only known remaining survivor of the 1990. 1925 sinking of the Emmy Norman. And he's looking at the model of the vessel uh, Monday morning with the Corps of Engineers, uh, Jim McNeil before the grand opening of the time in a capsule exhibit in the Federal Building in Memphis. And someone found a time capsule in the Mississippi River around that time in 97, 98. And in it was some information about the Emmy Norman, which brought about this exhibit. And over to the right is uh, the newspaper article. And you may see my little tabs over to the right. I used to keep everything, you know, hard copies. And around about 2006, it just got to the point where everything was virtual, online. And then I just started saving them in my favorites, which is not a good idea. I need to continue this. But also here, uh, everyone is familiar with the Tom Lee Memorial, the first obelisk. And this is the obelisk that I mentioned in Did You Know by um, E.H. Crump. This is the um, obelisk that he got put up for Tom Lee two years after he passed. 
And I did to the right, I just really just typed it out for you guys so that you could see how um, the people of Memphis who were involved in uh, keeping a Tom Lee legacy alive. And that is Watkins Overton, Walter Chandler, John T. Dyer, E.H. Crump, O.P. Williams, Claude Armoire, <clears throat> Armour, John High School, H.S. Lewis, Hugo Dixon, Robert Fredericks, <clears throat> E.W. Hale, okay, my little thing here is, okay, E.W. Hale, Will Fowler, uh, Colonel uh, Gardner Miller, which is part of the, um, the uh, Engineers Club, John Essie, Joe Boyle, Joe Curtis, a Plow, Jim Wood, and Francis Andrews. Okay. Um, this is a lot, and I just kind of wanted to still put it in here because uh, it does provide a lot of details about the uh, Emmy Norman and how the sinking happened. So um, I'll just kind of go through it a little bit. Um, I don't want to get too think often taking up too much of your time on this part, but um, I would like to start where on a Sunday, on a sunny spring morning in May of 20, uh, May 8, 1925, when, okay. This little thing is in the way. <laughs> <laughs> My screen on the right, I can't see it. Okay, so Tom Lee um, was an employer of C.W. Hunter, who was a Memphis fan company. And he used to take his boat, the Zev, to Helena, Arkansas, back and forth to Memphis, Tennessee, to come and work. And um, he was dubbed as a jack of all trades. And he was... Um, he used to ferry his boss back and forth to Memphis. And then he would return to um, Helena, Arkansas. And it was an easy task for him. But, you know, people wonder why he would be on this um, river daily like this and he didn't know how to swim. And this is something that, um, you know, it's just someone who just sacrificed for his family and just had to do what he had to do regardless of what he was incapable of. So um, he, so in other words, he was on this river, he was on the river that day and two other boats that were both much larger and grander than Lee's sail. I also pulled out of Memphis that morning and those two boats were the Choctaw and the Emmy Norman and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers vessels converted to a special use that day. Now, the Mid-South chapter of the American Society of Civil Engineers was holding its first annual meeting in Memphis. And the Engineers Club had arranged a special outing for the convention delegates. Two boats would be used to carry more than 150 engineers and their families to view the big repetment project underway at the Pickney Landing some 20 miles south of the city. A lot of people say, where is that? And I would think that it, you know, based on history, it was around near the cow's bend. But, I, okay, there we go. A little before noon, both vessels pulled into a channel and slowly chugged downstream. Only one would return. The Norman was a stern wheeler, 115 feet long with two smokestacks and two decks. Less than a year old, the ship was modern in every way and the inefficient coal burning system originally installed on her had been converted to oil just a few weeks before. In fact, this would be the Norman's first voyage using the new system which replaced the coal bunkers in the hold with the huge tanks carrying tons of fuel. This is the part, I highlight some of the things that kind of interest me. And it was also the first time that the Norman ever carried passengers. 
The ship was designed as a towboat with accommodations for a small crew. But the morning of May the 8th, with her new oil tanks filled to capacity, the Norman took on an additional weight of 72 passengers. Captain Howard Finn was a capable river man who had worked on dozens of ships and down the Mississippi for 39 years. If he thought the Norman was overloaded as men and women and children clambered aboard, he never said so. He might not have known better for today was a special day for him because Finn had just been transferred to this boat. He had never piloted the Norman before. And then we go right here to Leroy Hittinger, who was the young passenger on the Norman that day. And in an interview later as part of the University of Memphis Oral History Project, and the whole story is at the University of Memphis as well. Um, Hittinger recalled an ominous vision on the morning of the voyage. He said, my father, grandfather, and I went down to get in the car. And before daddy could start the automobile, I jumped out of it and cried, daddy, I don't want to go. The boat's going to sink. But my father and grandfather said, son, the boat's not going to sink. You're just needlessly scared and it's all in your head. So he took my hand and we went down to the river. Meanwhile, just a few miles away, Tom Lee had just turned sour moments after he dropped off his passenger and turned the Zeb back to Memphis. The little engine coughed and began to misfire. Muttering to himself, Lee let the boat drift back into the dock where he tied it off and pulled the cover over the motor. He knew he had better tinker with it now before he hit the treacherous current upstream from Helena. At the landing, the brief inspection tour was over and, engine, and the engineers boarded the Choctaw and the Norman for the two hour return trip home. Henry Wilkinson, a convention delegate from Washington had ridden the Norman downstream, but he felt a strange urge to change boats. He stepped aboard the Choctaw just as it moved away from the banks and pointed its bow upstream. But at Helena, Lee connected the starter rope of his Zev and whistled as the motor fired up and it hummed smoothly. He had worked on the engine for an hour, but he would be home soon and he thought that the Zev puttered north. Far ahead of him, upstream, he could barely make out the smoke of the two streamers, steamers. The Choctaw, the lighter and the faster than the normal, soon left the other ship behind. This is where it gets really sad because two passengers on the Choctaw's upper deck look back at the slower ship until they lost sight of it around the bend in the river. As the Choctaw steamed from home, no one aboard has ever suspected Norman was in trouble. Aboard the Norman, Captain Finn fought to maintain control of his boat. After leaving the landing, the boat had developed a slight list to starboard. The captain knew that on occasion the current would cause that, but he was, but he was worried. Other boats he had piloted to always righted themselves after a while. And to his consternation, this boat heeled over and stayed there. Finley calmly instructed the passengers to move to the high side of the vessel in an attempt to balance her. This strategy slowly leveled the boat and he breathed a sigh of relief. Then the ship began to tilt again and the list gradually grew steeper until the passengers could no longer keep their footing on the slant. Benton knew the ship was doomed. The crew rushed to toss out life preservers and anything else that would float. As the captain heaved the wheel over, perhaps there was time to reach the Mississippi shore before capsized. He was too late. Under the strain, the rudder failed and the boat was caught crossways in the current. The powerful current swelled against the hull, already heeled over at the dangerous angle and lifted the port side of the vessel clear out of the water. 
In seconds, the Norman rolled over in mystery, trapping dozens of passengers in the screen-in cat main cabin and hurling the others into the murky water. And here is the article from the Commercial Appeal dated May 9th, 1925. And it was the day after. And here you have the steamer M.B. E. Norman as commissioned in January. Um, the M.B. E. Norman goes down, boss may reach 20, distinguished engineers on inspection trip, be quick death in the Mississippi River. Um, and it just goes on and on. And these articles um, are in the archives at the May Library. And this was the Emmy Norma. 72 people was on this boat, steamship. And at the bottom, it has the Emmy Norman capsized in the Mississippi River. Uh, May 8th, River Tom Lee was the hero of the day, steering the boat and Norman trying to ferry 32 to the sandbar safely. Another 17 swam safely on their own, 23 people perished. A few weeks later, May 22nd, 1925, a local reporter from the Memphis Press Senator, George Morris, arranged for Tom Lee to meet President Calvin Coolidge in Washington, D.C. And the president called Tom Lee an outstanding Marine hero. And on the left, Daniel Wright, the sailor, Cow Project. He's the guy who I speak to often that is, um, he's primarily over uh, Calvin Coolidge's uh, history and he's writing a book and he wants to um, include Tom Lee. In it. And of course this photograph is um, taken at the White House in the Rose Garden. Nineteen fifty-two, April one. I'm sorry, nineteen fifty-two. Tom Lee died of cancer at John Gaston Hospital. He um, is buried at Mount Carmel Cemetery at Ellison and Evers Presley. Um, and you know, unfortunately, there is no historical markers that guides visitors to his grave. But the grave is um, is sort of in disarray. The whole cemetery, in other words. But um, if you wander along enough, you'll find it. And, you know, you just have to be careful. The um, owners probably need to do a little cleaning up. But the stone carries the simple inscription of lead me in the path of peace. And the Hollywood Cemetery um, was established in 1909 and they own two historical significant African-American cemeteries in Memphis. And this is one of them, which is Mount Carmel and uh, Hollywood. And sadly, both of them are weeded and overgrown and many are broken headstones and scattered throughout. And this information is from um, your local news where they've done stories on the cemeteries quite often. Okay, here we have um, two entities, the Riverfront Development Commission and the Urban Art Commission. Uh, Riverfront Re uh, Development Commission in 19, I'm sorry, in um, 2004, um, my sister, Carlita Neely, she's currently residing in Denver right now, but her and I, we would, we would knock on doors, we would email, we would call, we, we did everything under the sun to ask for some help to have Tom Lee's memorial be more indicative of who the man is. And um, who better to go to than the Riverfront Development Commission? So they basically, um, they didn't, I wouldn't say give in, gave in, but I think, you know, they saw a need to, um, you know, to put a face uh, with the name. So in May of 2007, which was only one day shy of another anniversary, uh, I received an email with some great news from the RDC. It was Benny Linderman then, he had set aside one hundred twenty-five thousand, and um, and he also set up for soliciting designs for the new Tom Lee Memorial, and he enlisted the Urban Art Commission to receive these designs. So, if you go to the Urban Art Commission website, you'll see it there, and uh, they were the ones who received over five hundred 
uh, designs from around the world, including Memphis. And at the time when I was living in Atlanta, my sister was in Denver. Uh, the Urban Art Commission, they scaled it down to maybe 50 submissions, designs, I'm sorry. And they mailed each one of us a packet. And between my sister and I, we, could, we were to pick the top five. And the top five, my sister and I both picked one person. And that turns out to be, um, when it was two years later, it turns out that it was being placed in the in his park, Tumley Park. Um, and this this was a, a memorial that stood outside the park for many uh, for for those two years. And it has David Allen Clark, who is the sculptor, who uh, we both ended up agreeing would be a great person to uh, lead this project. Um, later on down the line, we, uh, well, two, well, a couple of years later, I received another um, invite from the U.S. Coast Guard of Memphis. They wanted to honor uh, Tom Lee with this, with his, oh, with his valor. We mentioned, I mentioned that earlier in the Did You Know? And this gentleman on the left, uh, on the right of me, facing you, uh, he also saved someone in the Mississippi River. That was quite interesting. And then on the right in the in the burgundy shirt is my late husband, Eric Alexander. And he was one of my biggest supporters and may he continue to rest in peace. Behind me uh, in the yellow type of shirt is my cousin, Terry Watts, and also the rest of the guys from the Coast Guard. And in two, well, before the pandemic, uh, 2019, um, I met Jimmy Ogle. He's one of the Chevy, Chevy County historians. And he invited uh, me out to listen to some of his um, lectures at the Pink Palace Museum. And Tom Lee was mentioned in his lecture number five, which is um, readily available on YouTube and on Pink Palace Museum. But he, uh, oh wow, it was, it, it's just amazing just to listen to him tell the story in the history of Memphis. I'm a history buff myself. I like history. Um, I try to, you know, learn more as uh, much as I can about my, um, my hometown. And Jimmy is one of the ones to go to get that information. We also that week um, did a Memphis 200 because everyone knows Memphis turned 200. And we had the longest picnic table, yes. And we made the um, Guinness Book of World's record that year. And thank you to Kim Clark. She did a wonderful story on um, uh, WMC. And <clears throat> Jim, uh, Jim <clears throat> pardon me, Jimmy and I, we met at the uh, statue um, to do that filming. But that was a great day on the river, May 3rd, 2019. And meet the man who made this, uh, who put the statue, who made the statue, sculpted it, uh, created it, all the good things. Uh, David Allen Clark. He's um, originally from St. Louis. Uh, mm, someone else is from St. Louis, Missouri, not St. Louis, but from Missouri. But anyway, um, David Allen Clark uh, is now residing in Wyoming and he was one of the submissions. And this is uh, some of the work, um, how it started. And um, after he did the Tumley statue, he was called out to do the uh, University of Memphis Tiger. So here uh, is a memorial that is next to Tomley, the Tomley statue. Over here is uh, Tom Lee being um, sculpted and assembled in the garage in Wyoming. And down on the right is a tabletop type of thing where you, you know, you, well, I guess you would call it um, what sculptures do. Uh, in 2005, uh, this, the, these are the, um, the sketches and what Tom, uh, pardon me, David brought these to Memphis um, to the Urban Art Commission and we met him there. 
And um, I look at the date of June of 2005, and only a year later, Tom Lee statue was in the park. But uh, we, we met up and he wanted me to um, shine some light on how the face should be, because we only had two pictures from um, two pictures from the commercial peel. And um, so we, we, we did our best uh, to match up the sculptured face and different um, the arm movements. He wanted to show the strength. And um, of course, the one survivor that he's um, looking to save. And of course, he's at the, um, he's on the river as well. And Aria, she's so fond of the statue that she wonder what is the name of the guy he's saving? And I was like, that's very interesting. So um, just a little tidbit. But um, over to the right uh, is my family. Um, and I needed to tell you My stepdaughter, Aresia, my husband, Eric, and that was my brother-in-law, Dewan. They were all um, in attendance that day at the Urban Art Commission. And here are some other pictures that I found interesting. Uh, of the actual um, symbol, creating it, sculpting it, regular folks putting them together in Wyoming is, is these are some pictures hold on to forever. And on October 17th, 2006, it, uh, they began the installation. And um, as you see, the Eagle Bronze Foundry is who brought Tom Lee from Wyoming and they brought him on a flatbed and they had him coming down the highway just like that in the middle. And there's David in the red shirt. And down here at the bottom right, you will see, um, oh, sorry. Um, inside of the statue, when you go visit it, see how hollow it is, but it's always good to see those little tidbits. And these are the people that put them in the ground over on the river with the 32 lights around. Which is why I would, I would like to point that out. Uh, when David submitted his submission, he did indicate those three lights, 32 lights around the statue um, in, in remembrance of the people lives that were saved. And I think that's what me and my sister, we kind of gravitated to when we selected his design. And here on social media is just some different tidbits of different people sharing things that I search on my own. And one in particular I like is um, at the bottom left when Paul Kang said, um, remembering a decent man who chose to be a hero. And uh, you know, outside of whether he would be a hero or not, it's something that he felt that and here on the right is um, a local school uh, class that brought um, the students down to the river. And the teacher is <laughs> his um, lesson that day on the river in Tomley Park. In the middle here, I have a friend, uh, Leslie, she sent me this uh, showing that uh, there is a picture of Tom Lee in Stony River um, restaurant out in Germantown. And other, the other two um, are comments from websites. And in the middle, uh, we have uh, Barbara Cooper being interviewed by WIAN Radio. And that's just some few things. And on the left, Michael Jackson, his name is Michael Jackson. He, um, he wrote, some people don't want to be saved. I do. And I thank God, just ask for it. He would do it. And he took the picture in front of Thomas Stash. Here we have 923 Mansfield, which is the home that was purchased for Tom Lee um, by the Corps of Engineers. And basically they, um, the home is still there. And um, I'll tell a quick story of Yvonne Irons. She was the um, owner of this home a couple of years ago and didn't realize it was um, a historical site primarily eventually it will be, but it was owned by Tom Lee. And she, um, my cousin Denise is the one who found out about it. And we were like, wow, this is amazing. Um, we just never thought, you know, to go that far, but Denise, that's what she does. And we contacted Yvonne. She stopped renting the home out. 
And uh, she really just didn't know what to do with it. And um, she offered to donate it to the family. And um, I just thought that it was probably a better, something better to do with it. Um, so I had been in contact with Klondike's uh, Smoky City Community Development Corporation. The executive director, Quincy Morris and I, we, we've been speaking for years. And um, I just put her and Yvonne together and it turns out Yvonne don donated the home um, to the Klondike Community Development. And in the midst of all that, um, Shelby County uh, Mayor Lee Harris has also um, gifted the Klondike Community um, Development with more homes uh, in the land bank because they do such a good job for the Klondike community that, you know, everyone wants to help. So that's how we thought we could help. I'm going to go on through these real quick. And here we have the Memphis River Parks Partnership, which is um, formerly the Riverfront Development uh, Commission, I believe. And um, they are in works for renovating the Tom B. Park. And they have um, had several engagements um, keeping the community abreast of what is going on with the park. And in the middle, we have Aria <laughs> in 2019. She was looking through the little um, projectors they have so you can kind of see into the future. And on the left, we have um, George Abbott, uh, my cousin Terry, and um, they were looking at the plans. This is when we first heard about it in 2009. So at the bottom, you have the, um, the design as well. And that's kind of, um, they getting started with the renovation. And as we move along throughout uh, 2019, before the pandemic, they were doing a lot of promoting the future of Tom Lee Park. And um, I was fortunate enough to meet Carol Coletta, who's the president and CEO of the Memphis River Parks Partnership, and uh, of course, Barbara Cooper, the Tennessee State Representative, and Fontina Durham. She's the owner of the president of Durham Housing, who um, I met, and she just opened the door for me to kind of get updated on what was going on since I had come home and had no idea that all these things were taking place. So I just really want to thank her for everything that she's done. Also, here's the pictures from the engagement. Um, bottom left, Terry and I are looking at the uh, landscape with, um, <clears throat> with um, Studio Game. And then in the middle, I really like that, which is what excites you the most about Tom Lee's Parks, Tom Lee Parks Future. And people will write on the post-it notes what they thought about it. And then we have the mayor, uh, Mayor Strickland. And at the very top, we have a lot of people that are being engaged uh, throughout the, um, the engagement. And, oh, okay. and also you can go to Memphis River Parks Partnership with um, Facebook to get more information and to see more uh, pictures of it. And as I um, wind down the lineage of Tom Lee, um, these are pictures of our family reunions, of uh, the children um, engaging in the park. Um, also um, to the left is um, my cousin Johnny, who's uh, Tom Lee's grandson. He sent me a picture just recently of grandmother Ella Lee, which was great grandfather Tom Lee's daughter. So, um, we had one daughter who had nine children and she, um, one early was the last living child. And in 2000 and probably six, um, Birdley was with us for that, um, for that long. And she passed away around that time. And, um, our, uh, lineage, um, the descendants includes Lee. Neely, which is myself, Cage, Burks, and Watts. And the bottom right is uh, my nephew, Braxton, and uh, his mom. And that's Johnny in the orange shirt, and my late aunt, and another family. And those are a couple of, it was one family reunion, but we, we used to have quite a few, but not.
not having them as much as pandemic, I guess. And here's a little black history that um, I just like to include. And my daughter Aria did a video uh, for her school project. And here's a poem that my brother uh, Herbert wrote. And it's so touching. And um, he's, he's in his 40s, he wrote a poem. <laughs> <laughs> thought that was worth sharing. Um, <clears throat> also, I did a couple of interviews with um, We All Be TV with Brother Ron Ronald Hurd um, there on YouTube. It's quite interesting. They was taken, they was videoed uh, back in, um, wow, 2003. I'd like to listen to them today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here we have... Um, just a few links if you all want to just kind of go to memphisart.org, uh, memphismagazine.com, and tennesseeledger.com. There's uh, um, more historical facts and information there. And that's it. I think I did it. Right at 45. <laughs> I did it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got the area. <laughs> Oh, you are great. And we still have some time. Oh, um, wonderful. For questions, Jermiel, thank you so, so Absolutely. much for sharing. I am a huge fan of narrative nonfiction and hearing you read the oh. story of, um, of the M.E. Norman was very much, uh, yeah. it was just really, it was just a very en engrossing kind of. Um, yeah, it's like watching a like movie story and I, I didn't know all of the details of that I have one of my questions was well how was how was Tom Lee like was he on another boat was he on the Norman so thank you for just sharing oh, that and all good, of your good. okay um, yeah all of your family history and all of the different ways that Tom Lee has been honored um if anyone does have questions please please do add them to the chat um we've got some Many thank yous, Charmiel. Great job. Interesting history. Oh, thank you. So much my for goodness. sharing. Um, you are a perfect spokesperson for the family. Oh my God. Um, I do have a I do have a question. I was really intrigued at at the end when you were talking about uh, towards the end when you were talking about the the uh, kind of a celebration and reception with the with the sculpture and the post its. Yes. Um, kind of yeah. crowdsourcing mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. What, what exact, what excites you the most about the future of Tom Lee Park, Charmiel? Oh my goodness. I, um, I made a post-it that day. What was your <laughs> <laughs> I, If I know it was going to be a pandemic, I would have snapped a picture of it. But, uh, you know, I think that, I think those things are still on display there. Yeah. But, um, what excites me the most is, um, I enjoy parks. I enjoy nature. And you would know that because you see, I'm always trying to include my daughter um, in those type of events. But um, I, I think that parks are very important to uh, the community. And although it's in a place where, um, you know, a lot of people can not access it, but still, you know, we, we do use it to the fullest. And I, I just think that having a park uh, renovated at any given time and for the things that they are doing for the park. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've seen many parks in my time and I've not seen one done like this. Um, Memphis River Parks Partnership, their ideas are, are just, you know, it's almost like it's just it's out of this world. Yeah. And when you see it and it's just like, wow, you know, I can't wait to see this into fruition. It's, it's something I look forward to. Um, Candace Gray says, Memphis River Parks Partnership is happy to collaborate with the Neely Alexander family on the new Tom Lee Park. Mm -hmm. um, and the website is also there. Um, you can visit www.tomleepark.org um, for right. more information. So if you wanna learn more about the Tom Lee Park, you can look there in the chat. It's Tom Thank Lee you, Park. Candace. <laughs> Way to go, yes, because I love the website. Yes, it's very informative. Um, Charmiel, also, there's so much, I mean, just tons and tons and tons of research that has been done that you have shared, managed to like share with us in just 55 minutes, really 50, because I was talking about my own name for a little <laughs> bit so, um, before we got started. So yeah. if, if folks are interested in 
learning more about their family history or a specific person in their family. Do you have any recommendations for how to tackle, like start, because it seems very overwhelming. Um, I mean, the World Wide Web sure helps, but do you yeah. have tips for anybody who's looking to learn more about well, family's heritage? You know, it history? just goes back to my dad. And, you know, no matter who I, what I say or when I say it, uh, I always have to mention him because he, you know, instilled the fact that, you know, this was part of our lineage. And a lot of us have someone in our family that is someone that mm -hmm. did something important. It's whether we find out or not. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I think we do. You know, even if it's an uncle, he did something, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I think that the family should um, start to share those um the information with our um, younger generation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just like with Aria, you know, it's like, I started her as soon as she, I knew she could read, it was like, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> she, she's like, mama, okay. But now she's just, she's spilling it out and her friends want to hear her tell the story. So I have to keep her abreast of it. But I do think that, um, you know, outside of what I did when I started in 1998, I used um, the library um, and I went and I sat down at that library and, and I just was amazed at all the old articles that were still available to me. And I just would print, print, print. But now I can just snap a picture and <laughs> snip it. <laughs> So that, you know, I, you know, I, like I said, I really do need to get back into that because, um, you know, pictures, hard copies, things like that, it, it really matters to me. Um, you know, even here at the Dixon, I like all the publications and things you can touch and feel and, you know, kind of keep abreast of it that way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just kind of go with the family and, you know, have those family reunions and have those talks. Mm -hmm. And staying, you've said that y'all have engaged with, um, different family members from survivors from um, mm -hmm. from the, um, the it wasn't a wreck the um, the Thinking sinking the <laughs> yeah there we go yeah. no yeah um, um, it's like this really you know just such, it's such a tragedy that, um, that um, happened. I want to make sure I mention I'm glad you you know you you always so important with everything. And I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, when I came home, I, I kind of wanted to go a different direction uh, with Tom Lee and wanted to go with who the people he saved uh, mm -hmm. and where their uh, ancestors at today. Mm -hmm. So I had a meeting with the uh, mayor one time and um, he, he thought that was a good idea. Mm -hmm. So he put it in his newsletter uh, that he sent out every week or month or whatever. And he um, he got some feedback and we learned of about three families and um, I apologize when I add in that picture but we did take a picture of the family um, in 2019 and um, yeah and after that um, the Memphis River Parks um, partnership they also um, wanted to kind of find you know we kind of want to do it every year so you can get more information you know to in case someone misses the publication and then they also brought out some people and uh, that was just in May, May 8th of this year. So yeah. Well, I think something that just really resonated is this sharing of stories, right? I mean, this is, you've shared your story, your family members have shared stories. You've been piecing together this, this history and this legacy um, and um, the conversations and relationships that are built and continue to grow and strengthen through that. So Jermiel, thank you yeah. so, so much for sharing your story and Tom Lee's story. Um, I hope everyone will go um, and, and do a little more reading and also explore some of your own family history that Absolutely. you may or may not um, know about. How is your name pronounced and why? <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> Um, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. We do, uh, we'll be meeting again next week on Zoom and our speaker, I believe, will be our very own Dale Skaggs, um, Director of Horticulture. Um, the title, the theme, the topic is Some Like It Hot, Tough Perennials That Can Survive and Thrive in Our Heat. Mm. 
I know. <laughs> it's, July is here. So I hope everyone will be back again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Charmiel, thank you, for sharing. Thank you, thank um, you. And you know I'm going to be finding you around. Be like, okay, I have a question about this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll oh, see you in your office in ten minutes. <laughs> all right. Thank you right, so much. Have I really a wonderful appreciate afternoon. you. Thanks okay. So much. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, bye.